this is unit 2 lecture 2 the last lecture of unit 2 and in this lecture we are going to cover few more topics if you recall in unit 1 lecture unit 2 lecture 1 we have talked about three important topics in this lecture we are going to talk about vesicle trafficking and also we'll see uh, the movement of vesicles throughout the cell the secretory pathway and two different modes of vesicle movement protein translocation in cell organelle chromatin structure regulation and epigenetic modification and we'll also talk a little bit about the nucleosome and nucleosome remodeling the numbers written after every single topic name denotes the approximate number of questions you can expect from this chapter in CSR net exam. We call it chromatin remodeling or we can also call it nucleosome remodeling. So that remodeling can take place by different means. You know, for example, in this picture, you can see that DNA is wrapped around this stone and there is this protein binding site one, protein binding site two. One is with red, another one is with blue. Now, a protein needs to attach to this protein binding site one. Without this attachment, a certain uh, cellular function may not happen. But that part, that side of the DNA is facing the histone. So how can we access that? The easy way to get it is unwrapping the DNA from the histone or simply sliding, sliding the histone to a different direction. So if you slide the histone towards uh, right hand side here, that keeps us the opening in the protein binding side, one where the protein can bind. The same way, uh, we can also do a reverse shift, a reverse sliding that allows us to open up both a long stretch of the DNA from the histone so that we can get access to both the protein binding sites. Depending upon our need, we can utilize that, we can function with that. Now, the nucleosome remodeling are of different types. We'll see each of these, mainly three different uh, categories of nucleosome remodeling we can see. One is sliding, the one just we talked about. So this is uh, the histone where the DNA is wrapped around and let's say the binding site one. So the protein needs to bind. Simply we can slide the histone. So it's like, you know, the DNA is wrapped around these discs. We call it beads on a string model. So string beads are attached. Simply you just slide it a little bit so that you get enough opening uh, for the protein to bind with the protein binding site. Second thing here is transfer. Transfer is, is a rare job. It's not that easy. The sliding is a very, very easy and very common uh, type of nucleosome remodeling. While transfer is, while the histone from one DNA is transferred to the other DNA. It's like two DNA. One DNA is without histone. This is the one without histone, DNA 2. And DNA 1 is wrapped around histone. So DNA 1 will be unwrapped and the histone is shifted to the DNA 2. So now DNA 2 will coil on top of the DNA, uh, on top of the histone that's out there. That leads to the removal of the DNA 1 okay so because we need to have access to the DNA 1 because that has our protein binding site so depending upon uh, the region that we want open in the DNA utilizing another DNA the histone can shift and this thing is far more common right after the DNA replication because you know when the DNA replication occurs have you think any time like what happens to the histones because one DNA becomes two so obviously we need to produce more histone proteins and actually histone proteins are prepared in the cytosol and imported inside the nucleus. But 50% of the histones are old that was present earlier and new 50% histones are joined. So when the DNA unwrapped from the histone, because obviously you need to unwrap the DNA from the histone for the replication fork to form and for the replication to continue. But right after the replication is done, then rewrapping of the DNA onto the histone is uh, done. Here you can see the third is flipping, which is also a rare event. And flipping is not always necessary, like it's not always possible for events like replication and transcription. Flipping is only possible in situations where some protein needs to bind with some certain part of the DNA uh, and DNA modifications. For that, uh, flipping can be done. But for other like replication, transcription, flipping is not an option. So in this case, as you see, the binding side of the DNA is inaccessible because it's facing the histone wall. So what we do here, we flip it, we flip it, we flip it so that it faces outside, so that now the protein can access this flipped portions in there, okay? So these are the different types of nucleosome remodeling. 
Now, we will see some example of this kind of molecule where we are talking about unwrapping and rewrapping the DNA on top of the histone. And the examples of that, first we look at the unwrapping, then we look at the wrapping. The enzyme which is involved in unwrapping the DNA from the histone is known as acetyltransferase. Histone acetyltransferase, known as HAT. Now, on the other hand, there is another enzyme which can rewrap uh, the DNA on histone, known as histone deacetylase or HDAP. So what HAT do? HAT simply attach acetyl group to the histone. Where exactly they attach the acetyl group? You know, when we look at the structure of histone, H2, H2, BH3, and H4, all of them, they have this C-terminal, N-terminal side of the chain. That N-terminal side of the chain of the histone is known as N-terminal domain or N-terminal chain. That N-terminal chain contains a lot of amino acid sequences. Now, among those amino acid sequences, there are so many lysine residues. Those lysine residues are much prone to chemical modifications like acetylation, deacetylation, sumoylation, methylation, phosphorylation. Now, this kind of chemical modifications of those N-terminal chain, N-terminal tail of the histone can lead to dangerous effects. That can lead to uh, different effects like unwrapping the DNA from histone, rewrapping the DNA into the histone. And that can also cause uh, new DNA accessibility. It can cause uh, the DNA silencing, gene silencing, many more things. So that's the same idea. If histone acetyl transferase attaches acetyl group, it attaches an acetyl group to either H2H to H2, be H3H4 in terminal tail. That causes uh, the unwrapping of the DNA from the histone. And that generally is done when activated proteins in eukaryotes, activated proteins binds to the upstream regulator elements or upstream control element. Where you can see this is the inaccessible promoter earlier. You can see in this picture, this is the inaccessible promoter. So the promoter is not accessible now, but if you unwrap the DNA or if you loosen the DNA a little bit, then polymerase, RNA polymerase can access the promoter. So when activator is associated, activator will allow the histone acetylase enzyme to act. And when histone acetylase acetylates the histone, those N-terminal tails and lysine residues of the histone tails, that causes unwrapping, it's kind of unwrapping of the DNA from the histone, it kind of make the DNA structure a little loose from the histone octama. And as a result of which, Transcription machinery can bind to the promoter and they can initiate the process of transcription. Now the question is how exactly this resistor acetylation occurs? How exactly this protein works like that? This HAT protein sequence, it was found to be very similar with transcriptional activators known as GCN5 that is required for activation of subset of yeast genes. A lot of these genes are there which are under this tight regulation, you know, tight coiling of the DNA which is not accessible by the by the enzymes for the transcription, but this GCN5 is acting like that enzyme homologue of HAT protein that can cause uh, the easy release of the DNA so that the DNA can be accessible and they can do its job. But the question is how exactly this chemical modification causes the release of the DNA from the histone, unwrapping of the DNA from the histone. You can see it here in this picture. So assume that this, this circle structure here is with the hands. You know, these hands are nothing but the interminal tails of histones. So all the histones are there with their interminal tails. And uh, this 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 gray color thing is the DNA which is wrapped around the histone. And this is H1 is the H1 histone which brings uh, this. It's like more of a knot which which can even associate the histone with the DNA much tightly. So this positively charged tail. All the tails are tails are positively charged because they're rich in lysine sequences. The reason this N-terminal tails are lysine rich is because DNA backbone is negatively charged. So lysine is positively charged. So they can easily attach with the DNA like a Velcro. But now what will happen whenever this, this N-terminal tails are acetylated, look at what happens. When the N-terminal tails are acetylated, then acetylation of the tail weakens their interaction with the DNA. And as a result of which, the tail releases the DNA and now the DNA becomes free, now the DNA becomes accessible by the transcription machinery and they can do and they can initiate the transcription process. So this is one example of nuclear remodeling and, and release of his, you know, DNA from the histone. Now the process can be reversed. How? If we 
cleave the acetyl groups. The acetyl groups which are added, if we cleave them, if we cleave it out, there will be reversal of the impact. Like uh, this chromosome, like the DNA will be again rewrapped uh, onto the histones and the process will be done. Now the second type of modification we want to talk about is DNA methylation. 